Hey everybody, this is Chelsea Schaefer and Caitlin Gustav, and this is The Score, the official podcast of the sport of team roping. This is the Team Roping Journal's semi-weekly podcast, highlighting the team roping industry's top talents and influencers through stories that inspire and connect ropers. We sit down with ropers from the professional ranks, as well as industry icons and producers to delve into topics that make the team roping world tick. This is season two. It will feature even deeper interviews, storytelling, and issue-based coverage, and we are so excited you're here. Hi, Caitlin. Hey, Chelsea. Hey, everybody. Welcome to The Short Score. This is a really fun episode of The Short Score because we have... So, I'll backtrack for a second. Yeah. I was in Texas this past week, and I was there to record a bunch of episodes of The Score, uh, but I was also there for the Rope Horse for Charity, which is my favorite event of the year. I might say that about the timed event, too. I guess I have two favorite yep. events of the year. Uh, but I love the Rope Horse for Charity because I love the horses. I love the potential that that charity has because I feel like it, it's just the future of the sport, and I like to be a part of it. But I get to talk to the winners. I got, I got to talk to the winners of the Futurity. Mm-hmm. Um, as soon as they were riding out of the arena, I grabbed Andy Holcomb, who rode Blueberry Please. And Joseph Harrison, who won first and second, and he won the fraternity on dual axle. And so Joseph and Bobby Lewis, who trained and raised that horse, or, or kind of didn't raise that horse, but had him from the time he was a yearling, I got to talk to those guys. So that's a really fun part of this episode. The other fun part of this episode is a story I'm about to tell you. Mm-hmm. So I told you I would tell you this story when we did the podcast, because it's really fun. So Blueberry Please, the horse that won the heading was definitely a horse that everybody from the very first round noticed and thought that one stands out. That goes for both the heading and the healing. He was outstanding in the healing, and he'll tell you, and he'll tell you in the podcast, he missed in the second round, but it wasn't Blueberry's fault. And everybody thought that horse should have been top five in the healing as well. Mm -hmm. So he's this big gray horse. Well, I say that big. We all thought he was big, but he's not. He's only about 15 hands. Super friendly, super cool to be around like when they were taking his picture his wind pictures he had his ears up and was just kind of gawking around looking at everybody just a cool horse to be around well I was I watched most of the fraternity with Trevor Brazil and Larry D guy sitting there with my husband we we watched most of the whole deal together and at one point Trevor asked me a couple weird questions but I didn't really think anything of it Mm -hmm. so then we I I was texting Larry D because her and Trevor both didn't get to watch the short round I was texting Larry D, and she was really in the market for a heel horse. And I said, man, Blueberry Please looked so good all day on the heel, and he just won the heading. Maybe you should try to buy him. She said, okay, go see what you can get done. So I talked to Andy, and he said, man, I think somebody's vetting this horse as soon as the short round's over. Mm -hmm. So, like, he's getting ready to leave to go get vetted right now. And I thought, man... I let, I let Larry D down. I didn't get to buy the horse. Or I, it would have been cool to see that horse go somewhere that I knew. Well, Saturday morning, <laughs> I'm home with Elise, and I get a text message that's just a picture of a gray butt in a stock trailer, black ranchy stock trailer, pipe stock trailer, from Trevor Brazil. And that sorry sucker had bought that horse after the first round, pretty much. He had had it picked out. Yeah. He, so... Long story short, I have a feeling that we are going to see Blueberry Please a lot more than just at the Rope Horse for Charity, which is obviously the whole point mm-hmm. of the deal. Trevor got Ransom back. Ransom was a horse he and Larry D had made and sold to Clay Smith. Cl- Clay Smith sold him to Wyatt Imus. Trevor just got him back the day before, or the week before the Futurity. Oh, well, wow. the day before the Futurity, Treston roped on Ransom. Oh, and, that's awesome. Yes, yeah, so Trevor realized that Ransom probably wasn't going to stay in his number one string mm-hmm. for very long. So he was on the market, and the Futurity is the place to be if you're in the market, especially if you're Trevor Brazil and can pick one out like that. He yeah, picked no him kidding. out. He picked Blueberry Please out long before um, everybody else really noticed him and really picked him out. So I guess that's what you got to do it yeah. with horses that good. When you sent me that screenshot mm-hmm. Saturday afternoon, I was like, what? What are you talking about? I had no idea. And yeah. once you explained to me, I was like... <laughs> That sounds exactly like something Trevor would do. Yeah, he was pretty <laughs> proud of himself. He said he said he just got lucky and that horse ended up winning the fraternity <laughs> that he had already picked out. But I don't think Trevor Rizzo gets lucky no. at this point <laughs> of the game. So I'll be excited to see him. Everybody, if you're at the big opens, Trevor says he's going to 
obviously staying home, not rodeoing a lot, even though, you know, he's probably going to win his 25th world title in the tripping this year, or could, in a good spot too. But the moral of that story is that we're going to get to see this gray, kind of new to, new to team roping, gilding mm-hmm. under Mr. Brazil. I was going to say, in the, you'll hear it in the podcast later in the episode, Andy talks about how the horse has had about four months Yeah, before going to the rope horse maturity. Which Trevor didn't know. When yeah. I called him, and we were t- when, well, he called me after he sent me that picture and thought it was so funny that he had pulled <laughs> one over on me. I was like, yeah, like... He, do you think, like, what are you going to do with him? Are you going to back him off? Are you going to take it slow? He's only had, like, three and a half, four months of heading. And he was like, hmm, you're telling me stuff I didn't know about the horse. <laughs> so, uh, so we'll see how it goes. I'll be excited to watch that progression. Trevor rode a couple of maturity horses as well. Didn't end up making it back. Just barely missed the cut with the mm-hmm. barrier and a leg. But... Anyway, this episode is not about Trevor, though. This episode, (laughs) it it ends up being about Trevor, but nobody knows that until the very end. But this episode is about Andy Holcomb, who did Mm -hmm. such a phenomenal job with Blueberry Please, and Joseph Harrison, who now for the second year in a row on a different horse has won the American Rope Horse Futurity Association World Championships. Plus, shout out to Dean Tufton. He also put up $50,000 in incentive money uh, that guys won on his horses. So shout out to Dustin Rogers and Trey and J.D. Yates for that. They they picked up some big cash. So That's awesome. Yeah. All right, everybody. Without further ado, here are your American Rope Horse Futurity Association World Champs. Well, Andy, okay. you just won the American Rope Horse Futurity Association World Championship. Mm-hmm. I don't even know what to say. I'm still three to this. <laughs> yeah. So no. let's let's make this something fun to talk about. Tell Kay. me about Blueberry. Is that what you call him? Yep, Blueberry. Blueberry? Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, you know, a horse that just makes you look good and makes your job easy is, is hard to find, and he darn sure did. And it, and. And he darn sure should have done a lot better in the healing, too, and I missed the second one. Otherwise, he would have been back in the healing, too. Yeah, he looks and so good in the so, healing. Yeah. yeah, I would actually more pride him in a heel horse than a head horse. Really? I guess until today. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, no, I'm pretty proud of him. He's, he's done really good. Now, where did he come from? Tell me, how long have you had him? Oof, I've had him for four months. Mm-hmm. Um, so he came, uh, Steven Silva, mm-hmm. I got him past Robles, owns him. He had him in cow horse training with Justin Wright uh, down in Santa Maria, uh, Wright's Quarter Horses. Mm-hmm. And uh, they decided they wanted to sell him uh, four months ago um, and send him up to me to start roping on, and here we are. He um, just took to it really good and, and, and was easy. And He wasn't going to make it as a cow horse? You know, I don't know. He was. I guess not if he's here, mm-hmm. you know. Um, they can't all make it, and, and he didn't want to be a cow horse. He wanted to be a rope horse, I guess. Did you know anything about his breeding, anything about, like... You know, I know I don't know a whole lot about Nick's back diamond and those, but but whatever it is, it worked. It worked. <laughs> it worked. I mean, he's a little big, right? How big is he? Shoot, I don't know. I don't know. I I'd get. I wouldn't call him that big. I'd guess about 15, 15 one maybe. You know, I was sitting watching the whole deal with Trevor and Larry D, and we thought he was huge. Oh, really? All of us thought he was. He like, I would looks say, like a big horse. He does. I think he's got a lot of presence out in the arena. I think that's kind of something that makes a mm-hmm. a big deal, especially at these horse shows. Uh, you know, he doesn't, like I said, he, I didn't really see him as a big horse, you know, but like I said, when they, when they got a big presence, I think it makes a big difference. Has he been to town a whole lot, been in these kind of high pressure situations? No, this is it. Like, like I got him four months ago and started roping. So this is the first place we've ever been. (laughs) That's unreal. So no, he's got a good track record, I guess. And we said in the short round, um, Brad Lund and JD Yates put some major pressure on you. I'm still sweating. Yeah. I'm still sweating right now. Um, the horse didn't seem to care. He let no, you No, I think I cared way more than the horse did. <laughs> <laughs> he made up for my, my bad nerves, I think, for sure. Who was helping you? Uh, his name's John Chavez. He's mm-hmm. from Los Osos, I believe. Uh, yeah, and he helped me all, all the other day. And real good friend. Real good friend. Real good healer. Real good horseman. Yeah, he's shown a few. I think he's got one coming back really good in the, in the healing, I believe. What's well, Blueberry's yeah. future? You know, I don't know. Um, we kind of, he kind of come to me to, to get sold. And so, I guess, find him a new owner, I guess. It's, it's the play, unless the owner wants to keep him now, I'm not real sure. We're at, I mean, I sure wouldn't mind keeping him, but <laughs> you never know. Well, the world champion rope horse is now for sale. So, I hope our audience, I'll take commission. 
from this. That's really exciting. Um, if you were to sell him to somebody, I mean, what would you say about this horse? Like, what, what's your pitch on this horse? What makes him so good? You know, I think he's just a really just kind horse that, you know, just likes a friend, you know. I, I think uh, I think he just needed a friend and needed a, needed a good home and, and go easy, and he, and he took everything good. And, and uh, I think with that, he, he just kind of made He does it himself. He doesn't need to get picked on very much. He just kind of wants to do it. Yeah, I see you've got him in a hackamore. He doesn't need much? I did. I got him in a hackamore. Sometimes he'll get a little quick coming, uh, wanting, wanting to go left with the steer. Um, and so that's why I got him, got him in that. Um, and that's the only reason I got him in that. Uh, but because otherwise, in the healing, I showed him in the in a bridle first couple rounds. So, um, how many steers was he getting a day before this? Was he getting a lot? And you had four months. No. Crash oh no, it was no. My program's pretty slow. Like, I maybe five, six, maybe. I don't know. I go pretty easy. I do a lot of walk scoring. I don't put a lot of heat on them, you know. And I, I think maybe that's why he took good to it. I don't know. Um, but thank you. Uh, but it just seemed to seem to mesh. Like I said, I don't, I don't try to just cram it into him. I just kind of let him, let him go easy and let him figure it out. And, and, and I guess, I guess he did. Have you been here a lot before? Last year was my first year here. Yep. And I did terrible. It was, <laughs> it was awful. Yeah. I had a couple, I had two heel horses and it was, it was real bad. <laughs> so, yeah. so what did you learn? What was the horse just the difference or did you ride better? I think the horse and maybe a little more confidence and, and I've shown in the AQHA a little bit, um, in past years, uh, at the, at the world show and stuff and it was and it was and I had a little bit of success and it got in a few few uh, situations kind of like this um, it didn't go very good <laughs> and so that might have been some of my nerves too one of my nightmare steers is, is there uh-huh. it was one of the last years I run at the at the world show and so I'm not gonna lie if I didn't say I thought about that when I was out there and, but but it but it I cleared cleared my head and, and got, got called I guess now, um, what do you do? Are you just are you a horse trainer? What's yep. your mm-hmm. yeah, just ride horses. Yeah, mostly rope horses, a few colts, but yeah, mostly rope horses. We do a little bit of everything. We got cow, a couple cows, and a little bit of everything. Well, I hope I get to see you with Blueberry if you end up buying him. And Sounds if good. not, I don't know if I can afford him. <laughs> I know, not anymore. <laughs> yeah, not anymore. Maybe a month ago. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, exactly. congratulations. Awesome. Thank you. Mm-hmm. All right, I am here with the, don't make funny faces, I am here with Joseph Harrison and Bobby Lewis. Joseph, this is your second consecutive title. How does this horse compare to the horse you wanted on last year? Man, he's a, he's a really nice horse. He's, a, he's, a, he's, he's bred really nice, and, you know, Bob, his, Bobby's program, he, he, he picks them good. It, we, we raise all the horses there at the ranch, 90% that we ride, but... When he buys one at one of them auctions or one of them deals, he he ain't playing. He ain't sitting around there with his book, and he ain't over there just because he's messing around. When he buys one of these like this, he, he's got a reason. He, there's a point to it. So, therefore, I wind up getting to ride a lot of good young horses. Bobby, why did you, where did you pick this one out at, and, and why? Well, he was just uh, an outstanding individual as a yearling, and we bought him as a yearling, and I just liked him. Confirmation was really it was outstanding. Uh, I liked the way he was bred. Just had that look about him, and I just, uh, you know, he was like, he looked like me. He could had a, had a lot of potential, obviously, and so, and you know, fortunately, he's lucky enough that he did. So. And you showed him in the cow horse. Yes, yes, we showed him in the cow horse. Had him trained good, and he was, a, he's a nice horse. One little stuff. We got him qualified for the World Show this year in the cow horse, and uh, also the head and healing both. And uh, uh, fortunately, he's nice, sound, hard knocker, has all the parts. A lot of stop, a lot of run, and just, a, just a nice horse to be around. Pleasure to have one like him. And fortunately, we had. Uh, Good friends of ours purchased him a while back, a good little while back, and uh, allowed us to keep showing him. So it's real, real fortunate there. Joseph, your partner was a busy man all day. Mm-hmm. Chad, he ran more steers than I think I've ever seen an individual run in a single day. He got on, did he get on Clint or did he get on Twinkie for the short round? That was Clint. I thought so. They're, they look pretty similar. So, they do, yes, right. But Clint looked really like he hadn't run 130 steers today. Man, he's... Uh, that horse is strong. He's uh, he scores every time, and he runs hard, and he does his job, and therefore, he, and, and he's Chad's got three or four of those, you know. So he's the best help, in my opinion. When you come to one of these deals, you don't got to run that many steers. He's he's the best guy for the job. The short round was so tight and so tough, and the steers were interesting today. They were they were 
man's chairs today. Yes, they for were. Sure. Yes, they were. Mm -hmm. They weren't real user friendly. Yeah. <laughs> they were tough. But they were good. Yeah, they were good good steers, but they were tough. And then for a batch of young horses, they were they were tough. And, they, and them horses did really good, and I, I'm proud of them. Yeah. Now, your second place horse, tell me about that horse. Man, <laughs> he's, he's one that Bobby raised there. He's by Dual Spark. Um, and uh, he's out of a mare dancing in a boon lights, her name. Um, he's a. He's a. Pepto Boone's mom. She's a daughter of oh. She's the daughter of Pepto oh, Boone's no mom. Teaser. Yeah, yeah. Daughter of Pepto Boone's mom. How about that? <laughs> My favorite. Well, anyway, he's a he's a he's an awesome young horse, and he's got more talent and more ability wrapped up in a little sorrel ball of fur than I've been on probably. Now, um, this horse, you're going to show him again next year. What's the rest of his future going to hold? He's got some. Uh, you guys don't own him, so what's what's it look like? It'll just be it'll it'll all be up to Mr. Larry and Miss Denise and whatever whatever they decide they want to do with him. That's what we'll be glad to do for him. And like I said, we'd we'd love to keep him. You'd always love to keep one like this because they're they're easy, man, and they let you win. Any colts on the ground yet? By this horse? Mm -hmm. No, ma'am. We've not bred any mares to him. We've got a, we've got I've got a handful of mares booked to him for this for the coming season. We'll stand him there at the place, I, I think, and. Uh, well, I know we're going to, and in, in, uh, he'll, uh, we've got a little handful of mares booked to him already, and uh, I think we're looking forward to, to, his, to his colts because, uh, you know, he's, uh, I think he's been outstanding young sire. What's his introductory rate going to be? Uh, we're going to stand him for 1000 this year. So. Somebody's going to get a heck of a deal. Congratulations, exactly. guys. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you very much. Enjoyed it. Thanks, Bobby. All right, everyone, thank you for sticking with us on another episode of The Short Score. Uh, we hope you enjoyed listening to the winners with Andy and Joseph uh, and Chelsea interviewing them. And stick with us. Next week on The Short Score, we're going to have another article for you. Um, I will be at the USTRC's <laughs> Cinch National Finals of Team Roving in Oklahoma City. Yeah, so I'll be there for a few days, and so it'll be a slow week, and we also have an episode of The Score next Thursday with Brenton Hall, brought to you by Partrade. Guys, Brenton Hall, I'm saying this right now, Brenton Hall might be my favorite interview of the year. I hope you enjoy it so much. It is going to be awesome, so I'm sure I'll talk to you before then. But enjoy that episode when it comes. Make sure you're paying attention for it. See you guys. Thanks.